Hello and welcome to a small tutorial on how to make the skin look more smooth. Um, we are going to even out the small differences in hue and in luminosity, but we are still going to retain the uh, texture of the skin so it doesn't look so fake. So first of all, choose your um, quick selection tool by pressing W. From here you should ensure that add to selection has been chosen and then you simply press down the left mouse button on the parts that you want to select. In this case we select all the skin. So if it chooses too much simply hold down your Alt key while pressing the left mouse button and drag into the area that was chosen uh, that was not supposed to be chosen such as the hair. Once you've done that uh, you don't need to be too picky with your selection um, because we're going to refine it in just a second. Um, and the way we're going to do that is choose Select Refine Edge. You could also use, and you should also use, the shortcut key Alt Control R. Um, and once you're in here, we need to adjust the feather. Now look here from the parts that are chosen and the parts that are not. It represents it with a white color, the parts that are not chosen. And that should be more blurry. So chug up the feather value until it looks a little more smooth. Now it shouldn't be too high, such as this. This will make, um, yeah, the, uh, if you do this, uh, you won't have enough control of, uh, of, of what is uh, being applied to the areas that are chosen. So choose a feather that's, uh, that's not too smooth, but at the same time, not too sharp. Now, once you are, once you have set upon a value that you're happy with, go down to Shift Edge and yeah, you can pull down like this or you can write in the value. Remember, you want it to be a negative value. So, um, so the hair is not chosen. It should only be the skin that's chosen. And approximately here is quite fine. Once you're happy, you press OK. And as you can see, now the skin has been chosen like this. Then you press Control C for copy. It's like that in Word and yeah, the rest of the Windows interface. Then you press Control V for paste. Now, once you've done that, you have a layer consisting of only the skin. Yeah, and in this case, also her eyes and her mouth. Um, and once you've done that, you go to Layer and Duplicate Layer. Um, you could also press Control J. That's the shortcut key for duplicating the layer. And now I have three copies. So let's name them because as soon as your project gets larger, you will you will forget what each layer does. And therefore it's very important that you remember to name your layers. So let's call this one Surface Blur. Let's call the next one High Pass Fine. And let's call this the last one for High Pass Rough. Um, we disable the two uh, top layers, so right now it's only one of the layers that are being shown, and that's Surface Blur. So let's apply the Surface Blur filter here. Now these two values can be a bit tricky to set in the beginning, but as you process more pictures you will get a better f feel and a better grip of what these values should be. What you want to take a look at is, we want to even out all the all the tones. Um, so the tonality should be much more even than this. And we will change the values until it looks approximately correct. And it's especially important that you take a look at it. Uh, if you go too high, you can see it begins to lose more detail. The threshold is, um, how should I put it? Uh, it's uh, the difference between the contrasts and edges that it will try to retain or not. The higher you put it, the less it retains. So uh, if you chug it up too high, it will take too, too much detail. And if you have it too low, it will not take enough. So I will keep it here. The radius you could call strength, like how much should it blur once it finds out from the threshold uh, what it should blur. And 
if you set it up too high, it will look flat. It will look two dimensional. And if you set it too low, well, the point of doing all this would almost be moot. So I'm going to, to run with the values like these and then press OK. Now, surface blur is a very heavy filter to run. Odds are that if you're doing this on a full resolution image, uh, you will need to wait for more than just a few seconds. Especially if you have retained your image in 16 bits per channel. Now I downsampled mine to 8 bits per channel and a lower resolution. Uh, so this tutorial doesn't take all day with you just looking at the small green bar climbing up. So enable your high pass fine layer and go to filter other high pass. Once you've done that, you want to take a look at when you can barely see the eyes. Um, so zoom in a bit. And this value, if it's too high, it's not really fine detail that we are going to preserve. It's uh, the more rough details. And if it's set too low, well, it, it won't matter so much. So we should be able to glimpse the eyes like this. So 0 0.8 was the correct value for me. Again, take a look at your image and when you can just spot, barely spot the eyes and press OK. As soon as you've done that, you should bring up your levels by pressing Control L, L for levels. Now, here is our area of interest. It's a very small area of interest, so let's pull our left slider towards the middle and let's pull the right slider towards the middle. That will increase the contrast and we can easily see what's going on. Here we take a look at uh, the face itself and we want the darkest areas to be almost black and the brightest areas to be almost white. Now we're going to do this uh, two times because the first time it's very hard to do it precise and very easy to mess up. So take a look here. There are some colors within this area and we don't want that. We actually only want black and white image. So you can go you can go up to image adjustments desaturate or you can simply use a shortcut control shift u like this. So now you are sure that this is only a black and white image or grayscaled image. So bring up your levels again control l. And now you can see this area has spread out much more. Um, we need to increase the contrast a bit more. So again, the white should be almost white and the black should be, the darkest area should be almost black. We will keep it like this and press OK. So once you've done that, change the layer blending mode for your high pass fine layer to linear dutch add. Now, some people will prefer lighten or screen. Uh, I prefer linear dutch add because this is far better suited, in my opinion, uh, as to the final result that I want. You don't get to increase the contrast for the mid part areas. And well, there is a small drawback. It becomes almost too bright. Uh, now, this is before, this is after. And as this is increasing only uh, the brighter areas of this layer, um, you might end up with skin that is uh, a little too bright, but we'll take care of that later on. For now, press down the opacity and let's just choose 20 as a guide um, because we're going to readjust that once we have the final layer in order. So choose high pass rough and make it visible. So now we are back to square one, but go up to filter, other, high pass. And for this layer, um, for the rough uh, details to be more visible, we want a higher radius. We don't want it set too high still, but we want it to be somewhat higher than, than our 0 0.8 choice. So here you want to take a look at when both the eyes and the mouth and all major details should be fairly visible but not too visible. So I'm happy with this result. Again, once you have processed more pictures using this technique, you will get a better idea of which values to choose because you will know what it does. 
So once you've done that, I'll bring up your levels again, Control L. And as you can see, our area of interest is much broader now. And we still bring the outer points to the middle like this. Yeah, and we press OK. Then we need to desaturate, Control Shift U. So now it's pure grayscale. And we bring up our levels again, Control L. And we ensure that our blacks are almost black and the whites are almost white. Like this. And again, we give it the layer blending mode, linear dutch add. And we have retained all our details. We have to lower our opacity or it looks rather cartoonish. So again, I will choose 20 as a reference. Um, we're almost through. Now we only need to fine tune our values. So the surface blur, well, we still want some of the original layer underneath to be visible. So let's chug it a bit down to 80 or 70. Take a look at your final image as opposed to your starting point. You want all of these differences in luminosity to be evened more out. That was the point of doing the whole thing. So this layer is doing what's most important. It's creating the blur. But I would say equally as important should be your high pass layers. So start by chugging on the fine and readjust this value to your liking. If you go too high, it looks too sharp and too cartoonish. And yeah, it, it doesn't look good at all. If you make it too low, it, yeah, the, it won't have any effect, <laughs> obviously. And you want it to have some effect. So that's too high. So let's just go with 18. These high pass filters are easier to control the opacity of when you chuck them on one by one. Now this becomes way too much. As an added benefit, we also increase the overall sharpness of the eyes and the teeth and the nose. Um, so let's take a look of how it all looks together. We can assemble all this in a layer group uh, by holding down shift while all three are selected. I hold down shift and select the uppermost. Hold down shift and select this and they're in a group. So let's call it skin. And it's easier for us when they are in a group to simply chuck everything off and on. Now, if you remember, I said that the skin by using linear dutch add would be a little too bright. And that's no problem. We simply recall our selection by holding down control and pressing one of these layers. Then we go down to uh, our, uh, what's this called again? Our fill or adjustment layer creator. <laughs> I call it yin yang, whatever. Um, then you choose curves and in your curves, you can chuck down your midpoint, insert a point by just pressing somewhere on this curve and pull, pull it down. And as you can see, I make it a little darker. So this is everything from before and after. This is a basic skin technique. What we have not taken a look at here is how to, for example, enhance the lip color, remove any yellow cast that might be on the teeth, uh, correct even the skin tonality to a more likable skin tonality. Uh, like for example, sometimes the skin is too pinkish or too, too yellowish or too greenish. Uh, all of this can be amended in Photoshop. But for now, uh, you have learned how to even out the skin while still retaining the, tex uh, the texture of the skin. So that was it. Thanks for watching.